just before you go to lunch, I just want a couple minutes of your time. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things or kind of interest uh, points. Uh, you know, each day we've been calling out um, how many people have joined the webcast. So on Wednesday, it was on the order of hundreds. Yesterday, it was on the order of 250 uh, people joining the webcast, watching the webcast. And today, the numbers have steadily increased, and now we're back to the 250. So there's tremendous interest outside this room. I think that's very gratifying. On a uh, particular housekeeping point, several people have asked us what's going to happen to the webcasts. Um, our team back here is going to have the webcasts available on the same link, uh, or, or on the genome.gov link, uh, the same webcast number. The talks will be uh, linked to the agenda, so you can actually go through the agenda and, and review specific talks. So I think that's very nicely organized. As I understand it, um, the, uh, the webcast, uh, the videos will be available starting the week of August 5th. And NIH always makes transcripts whenever they do a webcast, so the transcripts from all the talks will be available starting the week after, beginning the week of August 12th. So a good deal of, of the meeting will be um, archived and, and recorded. Third housekeeping point, today is the last page to vote for your favorite poster. And be sure and vote. Uh, at the end of lunch is when we cut off voting. There's a ballot box right outside the poster room, so please be sure and vote. And the individual who wins will actually get a, a plaque or a certificate, so it's, it's worthwhile. Gilman. Are the uh, slides available on the webcast too? So we haven't decided what to do about that. We'll contact the speakers and figure out how they want to handle that. So uh, uh, we'll be able to, to uh, post a notice or something to the participants and let, us, let you know what we're going to do with the slides. Yeah. I know what you mean. So we, we, didn't ever, we never negotiated that with the speakers, so we want to try to work with them to see how they feel about sharing their slides. So we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll probably send like a, a global email or whatever um, to let you know what we're planning to do. And we're going to send out a survey to the participants anyway, so we'll probably add some follow-up items about this meeting after the meeting's over within the next week. So actually, I also want uh, to take this opportunity to thank a lot of people, a lot of people. I mean, I certainly was um, called out as a person um, during the speakers, but I want to make sure you folks here understand this was a major undertaking involving a lot of people. It took about a year to organize. And I just want to point out that um, probably the genesis of this meeting was about two years ago when Jeff Gordon was talking to me one day and gave me this charge, and I thought, oh my God. You have to get all the, he said, you have to get all the NIH directors in the room together to talk about this. And I said, well, I can't do that. But the idea kind of started to grow in my mind about how could we get the NIH together. And the second piece that, that, that fed into the development of this meeting was we really started to see this tremendous increase across the ICs on the microbiome. So it clearly uh, seemed like the time was ripe. And then I went to a AAAS symposium last year that Jeff Gordon organized. And he had this structure where he had each speaker call out a current gap meter challenge in the context of their talk. And I thought, bingo, that's what we can do with all the speakers. So really, we have to credit, even though Jeff's not here, we have to credit him with really planting the seed for this idea. So what I want to do, though, is because I pointed out there are so many people that were involved, if you could just raise your hand or stand up or in some way acknowledge your presence in the room, um, I think it'd be great, great for all the participants. So first of all, Owen's here to my left. Owen and Michelle uh, Gilio, is she in the room? Michelle? Um, Michelle's in the room. Oh, great, room. great. Okay, um, they were tasked with organizing this meeting, and I don't know that they understood what they were going to undertake <laughs> when, I, when I made that request of them. And, and Michelle has been absolutely incredible. I had no idea she had this, this kind of organizational skill set. So she's been amazing in keeping us on track and uh, probably on budget. Um, let's see. Um, there's a, the, the, so it wasn't just us, there was a core committee, so there's two layers. There was a core committee which involved Rob Knight and Jacques Ravel. So Jacques Ravel is here and I think Rob is in the room perhaps. Um, they helped a lot in terms of really brainstorming about the structure of the meeting and who we should invite and, and what are the goals of the meeting. Um, also, that core group was part of a larger committee that involved representatives from 16 different institutes at the NIH that were part of the organizing committee. We had lots of conference calls and Google Docs and spreadsheets and all that to try to make this agenda happen. So um, you've seen, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but you've seen many of these same committee members serving as session co-chairs or co-moderators or running the mics around as we have open floor discussions. So they've been engaged on all levels to make this meeting a success. 
Um, I do not want to forget the strategic results meeting contractor, Sue Dilley, and I think I'm going to garble Janine's last name, Obazitsky, Ann Dunn, and Janet Burdard. Uh, they've been in the back, but they were very co uh, collaborative in helping us make this meeting happen, making lots of creative suggestions about how to make it successful. So I really appreciate their, their input. The sponsors, you know, they've been kind of silent partners here, but they contributed a lot of money and they've been in the back here. They want to sell their products, but they've been an important financial support for this meeting. And um, uh, I want to call this out. Chris Wellington and Nick uh, DiGiacomo, they're in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris and Nick, Chris. raise your hands. Sh uh, Shyla is not in the room, but Shyla Chiba was also an analyst with the HMP, and they are the you know, the, the, the backbone to keep all these activities going. So they've really helped. But they also contributed in two ways. Both Dr. Collins' slides and Eric Green's slides included data that Nick and Chris collected, like, for example, the HMP citation data or the distribution of funds across the NIH in the microbiome area. So they actually computed, contributed data to their talks, which I really want to commend them for that. Uh, in the back, another set of silent people uh, are the NHGRI team. Maggie Bartlett, Alvaro Encinas, and Steve Benowitz. I think Steve is still in the room. They have been running all the webcasts. They came Tuesday evening at 9 o'clock and spent four hours setting up the cameras, setting up the stage, the lighting, and all that so that this became a seamless process for webcasting, broadcasting this uh, across the web. So I, I commend you folks in the back. Uh, common Fund. I know Mary Perry's in the room. Mary Perry not only support, provided a, the lion's share of the funding to make this meeting happen, but also encouragement and real excitement and was very interested in the new model of this meeting that we really want to develop. So I really appreciate that, Mary. And the invited speakers. You know, you really embraced the charge for this meeting and really worked hard to share your thoughts about current gaps, nature challenges, so we could all really think about if those are the things that we need for the field. I really appreciate your embracing the, the spirit of the charge. Ed Young is in the room somewhere, I hope. <laughs> Maybe he's not. He was here earlier. Uh, he'll come back in the afternoon. We called Ed right away when we realized we wanted to have these open floor discussions, and he had uh, moderated the, the Paris meeting, the International Human and Microbiome Congress in Paris last year, and it occurred to us that you know he might be the, a great person to, to, to do this for us. So I really appreciate this. Not his normal role. He's a journalist, but he has a tremendous interest in the microbiome, so we really appreciate his willingness to be game to achieve our results. And all you participants in the room, you know, when I think about it, and I was saying this to a couple of people, most of us do not go to the same meetings. If you look at the distribution of expertise and disciplines across this room, we're looking at four or five or six different scientific communities that have come around around the microbiome. So that requires the interest and willingness to, in fact, go across disciplines. And so I think to have all these different scientific communities coming together to talk about the microbiome, you folks really made this a successful meeting. And Jeff, I do want to say this wherever you are. Um, I hope that you feel like we've met your challenge, and um, I'm very proud to, to be part of this. Thank you. Uh, let me just uh, add a little more uh, color to this. I wanted to uh, uh, just talk uh, briefly about uh, the successes of this meeting. I am mightily impressed by how many people are still in the audience. I think it's absolutely amazing. And the, uh, the data point of 250 people watching, I just can't believe that. Um, and uh, obviously, we've had just an incredible collection of luminaries to present, and I think it's just an incredibly successful meeting from that angle. Let's not forget that we're also going to get a report out in Nature. Um, I'm really excited that last night I attended a dinner where people were sitting down to talk about protocol standardization, and um, I just couldn't believe how much it touched my heart to hear Julian Davies say that this is the most exciting time in, in his whole life. And uh, since this is the most exciting microbiome meeting ever, he must be at an absolute peak, right? This is it right now. So I just want to just wanna say I think what's so interesting about this community is it reminds me a little bit of one of his slides that said that bacteria are both um, competitive, but they're also highly cooperative. 
And I think that's very true for everybody out here. I think the, the vibe um, of, of this con consortium or this group of people is that we're just so supportive. Uh, Lita has really rigged everything, so we've really been listening to each other, and we're establishing this great relationship to NIH. So all of these elements that we've just been talking about, Lita has played an instrumental role in it all, okay? I marvel at the fact that this group of people, we don't hate each other. <laughs> we really seem to be getting along very nicely, and that's because of the, the tone and the vibe and what you have just absolutely brought to hold. So let's just thank Lita for. <clears throat> now what are we gonna do about lunch? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank okay. you, thank you, Owen. Uh, uh, another housekeeping, because we're running late, what I'm gonna recommend is that we um, have lunch for an hour, because I don't want to torture you for the rest of the day. Have your one hour lunch, but come back at one rather than 12.45. So the rest of the schedule for the remainder of the afternoon will be shifted now by 15 minutes. Okay? Thank you. So come back at one. Thank you.